corporate commission might like to hear that. Hey, guys. Hello. <laughs> Hi. What's up, nerds? How's everyone doing? It's Hola. Tuesday. Oh, oh, man. I know. You know what tomorrow is? I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know what time you have to get up tomorrow? Uh, yep. <laughs> early. <laughs> like 4 a.m. early. Regular like, time. like 3. What's that? I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, I have to get up at the regular <laughs> time. Too. like, I can just sleep into the normal I think my time. flight on Thursday is like at 8 something, so it's not too bad. But No, I will be going to bed early. Tonight. Yeah. Bill Kelly says, give me more paints. We got you. <laughs> we got lots more paints coming. And hello over on YouTube and all of you Twitchers. What's going on, gang? Hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Up here, Steve, we got paint liquor. Bakamaru. I'm doing yep. great. Baka got, uh, paint liquor got you, Baka. Warpig, T. Schmidt, Sup Nerds. Hey, Rancid, what's happening? Rancid. Chuck! Hey, Chuck Nerds! Yes, we are fine, sir. We are nerds. If you're uncomfortable in an environment filled with nerds, this may not be the place for you. That's accurate. I sent a, a big long email to Reagan, just kind of telling her what, what she to expect. Might expect. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm like, so basically, I said, I said, I know this is a lot of information, but basically, um, what it comes down to is we, we have a lot of fun making really cool stuff to help people. Be more creative. Um, nerds. You know, we all, we've kind of embraced the term nerds. We wear it with pride. <laughs> Is she not But a... I sent her all the links. <laughs> like, just look at all this stuff. Look at all this crazy stuff that we do. Yeah. We I might can't... be nerds. She's I can't imagine. Man sitting and painting tiny tricksy rats. Yeah, nerds for sure. <laughs> nerds for sure. We are definitely a special, a special breed. Yeah. <clears throat> we are the Monument Hobbies kind of nerd. This is plural. Is that, is that bad? Is what bad? <laughs> I don't think so. Is that bad? Is but what, the jury's out. Bad? Being the Monument Hobbies kind of nerd. Oh, no, that's the best kind. <laughs> Here we go. Jen has has spoken. <laughs> if spontaneous debate about the mind think of the god emperor of mankind might bother you, this stream might give you bowel trouble. Uh oh, rut row. That's an example of me just reading the words. <laughs> Did you? Jen's like, I don't know what any of that means, but great. <laughs> we are special. <laughs> Quotation marks. Enough said. Paka, if he didn't say first, it doesn't count. <laughs> he did not say first. Game Delay thinks that they're definitely the correct people to judge whether being a Monument Hobbies kind of nerd is good. Okay. Yeah. Oh what is gosh. it? Oh, no. Well. <laughs> well. Maybe. You want to see what everybody at the booth is going to be decked out at at Adepticon starting on Thursday? So, thank you, Gabe. The wonderful Mr. Gabe came by. Does anybody remember a while back when I said something about Flava Flav clocks, right, on stream, and that we needed to make them out of. <laughs> it happened. So, Gabe went and took texture trainers, right? And now we have Dookie Gold Chain Texture Trainers. I wish I would have asked for an extra one to be made for me. Okay. I'm sure Gabe remembers how to make them. Well, I, I don't know if you have enough supplies. Oh, that'll happen. So Gabe now we have these. Just one. <laughs> it's beautiful. It looks very nice on camera. It does actually look like really the, nice on camera. With, well, and when he was wearing, like, the, the Thai the fashion, cam, J.P. Gray. The, it was, like... Glittery, Glittery, like shimmery gold. I need to give that back to you, or it'll bad oh, things will happen. Lumberjack Tim, that would it would match your grill. <laughs> oh my gosh! We should get one to Tim. <laughs> What's going on, Tim? You expected <laughs> non-metallic metal? I mean, we only had so much time. <laughs> yeah, I'm not painting all those things. Are you kidding me? I got other stuff to do. 
Jordan's, Jordan's got nails. hundreds and hundreds of miniatures for WonderCon. He's got to get prepped. Yeah. You have my address, said Tim. <laughs> Baby Gray, I want it so bad. Panic Bomb, hello. Make Baby J paint through the night. Man. No. <laughs> No. We already had no. this conversation. He's got to no. go to bed early. Baby J, 24 hours. I can't make it happen. Flight. I got to go to bed early. Make it happen. <laughs> got to get up. Their flight's at 645. Yeah, I'm not so excited about that part. It'll be a long day for you boys. Yep. That's what it takes. Yep. The booth's got to be set up. The Do you sleep on show plane? must go on. Huh? Do you sleep on the plane? Uh, I can. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Uh, I, I immediately get on the plane and pass I the hell out sure can. on those kind of things. I can't sleep at night, but I can sleep on a plane. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like, I should, just, I should just take some more time being on a plane. so in right now. <laughs> Empty Wallets crew. <laughs> That's the whole crew. Okay. <laughs> Empty Wallets Chris crew, Park. you here? Philip, you here? I mean, they are in the building. They are in the building, T. Schmidt. Whether they haven't or not they been are excused watching, yet. All three of the new sets will be at Adepticon until they're not. Yes. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> until they're not, they will be there. So we do expect them to sell out pretty quickly. Uh, booth opens at 10 a.m. Thursday, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 10 a.m. Thursday. Right and early. No, it's actually not that early. Which is awesome. No, it's not early, which is, that <laughs> which is, is awesome. the good thing about Adepticon is that you don't have to be there at the crack of dawn. Um, be prepared to stand in line. Yeah. It's just the way it's going to be. Bring a friend. Talk some nerd stuff. People watch. It's great people watching Adepticon. Uh, Breakup Google said, what are the leaves on those bases? There are where no are the leaves? Oh, where are the leaves? On They're the fake. Sorry, we didn't. We didn't do any of that. I'm taking a page out of Jen's painting book and doing the minimalist the job of basing. Standing on the ground. All of Jen's miniatures are on asphalt. These are not asphalt, though. Uh, Jim Crimmins, end of April, beginning of May. We don't have a specific date just yet. We will have that date as we get a little closer to it. After all the shows and stuff are over, Jason and Jordan have, have not only I'll Adepticon. Throw back my legs and pollute my britches with delight. Oh, did I miss? Oh, Avian, thank you. Hello, Avian. Thank you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, Jason and Jordan have not only Adepticon, but they have WonderCon af immediately after. So they're we back for like two days and then they leave. A pretty So um, once we here are done with March, basically, then the focus will be on that next release. We help our FLGS partners get set up with their stock as well. And then once everything's set there, then that's when we put them on the website. <laughs> Ryan Wallace said people watching is all fun and games until the police ask you to get out of the tree. What is wa what watching? <laughs> people watching. Oh. The oh, where are the leaves on the bases was was from yesterday's joke. Sorry. Sometimes I don't even remember a joke 10 minutes later, so <laughs> definitely cannot be expected to remember something from yesterday. Dark Hunter, I thought the small break between Gamma and Adepticon was rough. Yeah, Jason's all three, so... Uh, not even just three. It's Gamma, Adepticon, WonderCon. You've got a... you got a short trip in between, don't you? Well, I have oh, to go. That's not a con, though. That's just... We got a thing. new piece of paint filling hardware, big machine that I have to go to the manufacturer and do the sign-off test on the cap placement automation portion of it. So it's, it's still a whole other thing. Yay fun. 
<laughs> Yay, fun. Yeah, I have to detour from Adepticon before coming home. I have to go to Baltimore. Jordan, are you nooshing those tanks right now? I'm not nooshing the tanks. Just I am wash. just giving it a good old wash. Just a wash. A little bit of water, a little bit of glaze and wash medium, and some, some brown wash. Got to be careful with noosh at smaller scale stuff. Agreed. Yeah. Right? Typically, subtractive weathering techniques much better on larger scale. Mm-hmm. Uh, because you you know you can control it. It's just going to take you much more time to control yep. like the the size of the streaks versus the size of the tank. Yep. This is a something that's supposed to be going pretty quick here. I don't want to be spending a lot of time doing all the last minute noosh on on these. <clears throat> uh, Avian said, "Question: Will Jason have the one thousand yard stare when he is working the booth? You mean is that the awkward man stare?" Is that what that means? Wait, dude, I'm I'm fully in tune with you people when I'm at the booth. I'm engaged. Jason will be great. So I'm usually tomorrow, fairly pleasant. Baka, the three. next stream after tomorrow. So tomorrow, Jason and I will be here, and then there's no stream um, Thursday, Friday, or Monday. Next Tuesday. A week from today will be the next stream. Yep, Jason and I will both be back for those. Well, I'll be back for that. Yeah. Jason will probably be back for Jason, that. maybe. I should be back. I, I, I come back Monday night. Will you be back in the office whether, I mean, whether or not you'll after be... being gone for several days, so. That's that's always the kicker. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have something that crops up that keeps right. me from doing what I like to do? <laughs> we were just talking about that at our lunch meeting. All the things... Oh, that, because of the amount of work you've been doing, are you going to just be kind of glazed over in like a zombie? No. This is not really, I mean. Shows are energizing. Yeah. They the really shows, are. we do this kind of work anyway. The shows just add a layer of travel to it. Mm -hmm. We're always, I, I work 24 hours a day, pretty much. Can hey, you bring J hello. Jason bananas at Adepticon? You most certainly can. <laughs> you need some potassium. Um, like oh, at a maximum one per day. Yeah. And that just means one for everybody. So you got to get your resources together and buy one banana. Eggy Grip, what's going on? You get it for 19 cents. At Hoosiers! You could actually do painting next week when the stream isn't on. What? <laughs> wow. You're supposed to be stream. painting with us right now. With us. I don't understand. Will there be a first banana badge or something? Maybe something with a spittle no, coming out of his mouth. No, Would that be meat, have... or is that, like, it looks like meat. We have gold texture trainers on gold chains. We do have that. Shows we are energizing until, that. like, 6 p.m., then it's the most tired you have ever been. Um, no, because we do dinners, so the dinners are the always dinners super are always fun. Nice, yeah. And then after dinner is when you're ready to... Well, I'm I'm being prepared too. I'm bringing like a couple pairs of shoes for like different like I'm gonna have a pair that are just for being in the in the booth that mm -hmm. are nice and cushy and comfortable. Mm -hmm. well, that's my goal for that. So my feet don't get wrecked by standing on them all all day for five days. Oh my gosh, the whole line on opening day bringing a banana for Jason. Oh my lord. <laughs> Can, Can you imagine if we have like there. a box of bananas at the end of the day? <laughs> yeah, because he's not going to be there on opening day until like late afternoon. Yeah, I don't get into so... <laughs> the, I won't be on the show floor till like three o'clock or four o'clock. Only for the last couple of hours on Thursday on will Thursday. I even be there. Jordan will have to take the bananas. I'll take the bananas. <laughs> I'll eat a couple though. Peggy Grip said, I decided to join the monthly challenge yesterday, so I'm neck deep in wing painting. Nice. That's awesome. Very cool. Wow, Monument pays good enough to own two pairs of shoes, Jordan. <laughs> Turns out. <laughs> thankfully. Jordan bringing work slippers. <laughs> I, I am going to bring my slides for when I'm done with the, sh with the, the booth. Let your feet breathe. Yep. Okay, real question, Baby J. Hmm. When doing ice scape bases, should I be dry brushing in one direction to indicate a windswept look? It's my mm. understanding that you always dry brush in one direction. Try to, unless you're doing some sort of texture other that, you know, requires like a lot of counter directionality. Always dry brush in one direction. That's what really gets you the benefit of the <clears throat> technique in it anyway. 
I mean, if you're if you're trying to go for like the the windswept ice feel, you're actually not going to be dry brushing. You're going to be overbrushing because you want the brush strokes from the bristles. Um, the idea with like a good solid dry brush is that you actually get no visible um, brush stroke. It should be all very soft and subtle um, edge highlighting of details with the with the dry brush. So you want to do what's called an overbrush, where you just have more paint on your your dry brush when you're applying the paint. So you just remove less of it than you normally would for a standard dry brush layer. And then that'll and then you want to keep it in one direction if you want to go for that kind of effect. Avian said, look, large number of bananas, you can make banana bread, but but there won't be in a place where they can bake. They're at a hotel. Eggy Grip said, I picked up the fluorescent set this weekend at my FLGS and was curious why you chose not to do a blue. Uh, blue as a fluorescent isn't really a great color. It'll still give the UV glow, but we didn't design the fluorescents around their UV glow. That's kind of the tricksy part of it. We wanted the brightness in normal light where your model is viewed most of the time. Uh, and blue doesn't hold up. So our sky blue or our transparent blue over white are already brighter. So you already have those tools. Yeah, when we're able to get a similar or better effect with non-fluorescent paints, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for us to make a fluorescent version of that paint. Especially when we're not, not going for the UV glow, right? <clears throat> Does anybody know what this is on his What's teeth? That? Is it spittle? Yeah. Okay. I would imagine so. Any enclosed space is an oven if you have the right attitude. Well, then we will mail that very undercooked banana bread to you, game. Boy. <laughs> very undercooked banana bread. I mean, we could <laughs> always like yours. get a Dutch oven. You can be the taste tester. And like an open flame somewhere, <laughs> which is kind of hard to do in the middle of a city safely without getting arrested. Some um, jerky cotton in between his teeth. It's blood. He bit his lip really hard. Little Gorger Ma Pack. Are you trying to figure out what that is? I don't know what that is. It's like the way it's sculpted looks like like fresh meat, but it doesn't like go on and wrap around his teeth, right? Yeah, they just kind of got it as like bloody mm -hmm. gross. Yeah. Bloody yeah. gross. Ryan works. Wallace said, I think it's meat and cloth caught between his teeth. Yeah, that's what it feels like it should be. They don't just they just don't do a very good job of uh He could be nomin' on some intestines. I like that though, with a little bit of blood on the face. Yeah, yeah that does look really good actually. Kinda cool. Be a good opportunity for some some dark crimson. I was gonna say, I got some dark crimson over here. It looks pretty good. <laughs> you need some floss. I think you need a little more than just floss. Perhaps some mahogany. He does need some blood. Ugh. So much to do today. It's been a very busy day. You're like any of the days where you're trying to get prepped for not being here, mm -hmm. always like have too much. Hmm. I am excited for Adepticon. I truly love that show. It'll be nice to, to be back. <laughs> Chuck, I don't even want to say that out loud. <laughs> what did he say? Chuck's uh, today's uh, adventures in machine shops. Oh my gosh. We'll just about it in Discord. <clears throat> he told... Oh. Did you guys see it? What is wrong with your I didn't machine see shop? So he said it was a... a a truck 
carrying some what was it carrying Chuck I don't remember but it, it tried to make a sharp turn and missed and plowed into the building did it like like come through the walls loaded with steel bars this truck was oh my gosh and couldn't make a sharp enough turn and ran into the building nice did anyone get hurt that was the question I really should have asked I really when, hope not. when I reacted to that. <laughs> Instead, I'm like, you guys can't catch a break. Also, yes. Yeah. Uh, Breakup Google said, did you have any bad gaps in those Gorgers? I have one where the arm just has a warped piece and needs to be gap filled. No. They went together pretty well, I think. I didn't have to do anything. It hit the lunchroom at lunchtime. But, like, did it, like, <clears throat> no injuries, thankfully. Well, that's good. Did it, like, drive through the wall, like, in the building? That happened at Games U. I drove right through their front big glass window. Oh, yeah, that's right. And that happened at Heather. Heather's salon as well. Same thing. They thought they were... In reverse? Uh -huh. Look behind them yep. and hit the gas. Yep. And D takes you into the store. Yep. <laughs> and it takes you into the store. That's a two window six foot. Yeah, that's like what happened at these two places we're talking about. That's crazy. I didn't want to take a trip to this store, but I guess I'm here anyways. <laughs> these Bane Blades are very large. They're very large models. <laughs> Drive through game store. I'm onto something here. <laughs> drive through game store. <laughs> oh my gosh. We could do with a little less driving through of game stores. Or any store for that matter. Or any store, yeah. Yeah. I'm mostly looking forward to Adepticon so I don't have a work disaster that day. <laughs> or if there are disasters at work, you don't have to you don't have to think about it. Deal with it. Yeah, I feel like Chuck's just been like bringing us the the one thing after another. Yeah, it has happened been lately. to the the office. Lumberjack Tim said, "Did I tell you guys the divorce was finalized Friday?" I did not hear that, but I wasn't here I Friday. Did not. Is that? I, I mean, I, I, I feel like you, you're okay with this. I don't. I don't know if I should say congratulations or, or you're having a rebachelor party. So congratulations. <laughs> yep, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, it's always tough. Like when you know, get the divorce decree, it's it. like, am it's I supposed so to say I awesome? Mean, it... What am I supposed to say? It's definitely sad, regardless of you know whether it was. Something that, you know, is mutual. It's still sad. Oh, that looks good. Oh, oh the great. blood? Yeah. It was like it was meant to be. He was meant to be eating something bloody. Probably not Benjamin. We don't want, we don't want him eating Benjamin. <laughs> it's a great thing it allowed me to get my grill. Marriage is holding you back. Liz said there won't be a divorce, only a funeral. Ugh. <sighs> Is anybody here going to Adepticon that has not left yet? Chuck and Jade, I'm assuming. Because mm -hmm. they're here. So it seems like a toss-up. A lot of people leave today and get there in like the evening. And then they're there for Wednesday. Which is interesting because there's not a whole lot of stuff that's actually open on Wednesday. Dark Hunter, I haven't, but I also live in Chicago. <laughs> so you're just there. You get to stay at home every night. Yeah. <laughs> Like you can go get your still at home, flies out tomorrow. Right. 
rye lamp leaves early tomorrow morning. Chuck and Jade won't leave till Friday. Oh, you guys are taking a, a shorter About 90 weekend. minutes away, Chuck and Jade are. Oh, wow. That's, I mean, that's pretty easy. That makes life pretty easy. <laughs> Paul Kamara said, I don't know what this divorce stuff is. My wife's been making threats for 10 years. I have them saved in my phone as exhibits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's awesome. <laughs> well, Your Honor, let me pull out my receipts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How funny. It's funny you say that, because I happen to have the recording of that. Your Honor, I have it saved on my phone right here. Is anyone flying there? A lot of people are flying there. Uh, yep, Our we are. Is flying there. I would not want to drive there. She's not. I drove to Chicago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not that bad. How, not bad. how long is it from here? Twenty-two days. hours or something like that. Yeah, that's a little longer than my preference would allow for. <clears throat> seems, <laughs> seems long enough. Yeah, Rob, did, Rob never flies. Well, that's not true. He's flown. Where did he fly one? He flew to LVO one year, I think. I think that's right. Or maybe he flew to Adepticon one year. But one year he flew for sure. He's driving. But yeah, Adepticon. he drives pretty He's much. On the road. If he goes, he drives, usually. Schmidt said, dang it, Fuse, how do I decide what paints to take? I have more than 96. Hmm. Choices must be made. Well, there's a lot of space in the back of the bag. That's true, too. So you just dump them all in the back of the bag. He did fly to LVO, and he was so drunk. I remember I drove him to the airport. <laughs> I had to get some courage there for the flight, huh? Or bring himself into a super sleeps the whole time. <laughs> You work it right, you can make sure your flight to Chicago goes through Atlanta. That's well, most of them do. I, th I don't think they're stopping, though. I can't tell you how many times I flew from Chicago to Atlanta, and then Atlanta to Phoenix. Oh, really? Atlanta is a hub for American Airlines, mm. and so is Chicago. You know, having grown up in the Pacific Northwest, and basically only ever Alaska. flying Alaska <laughs> forever and ever yeah. and ever and ever and ever into eternity. Um, it's been really refreshing um, taking flights with uh, American. Yeah. I really like that airline. Pretty comfortable even in the, the seats where, you know, you're in the back of the plane. And uh, it's, just, it's a good solid little... Akamaru, those are the types of cross stitch that I used to do. <laughs> that one's funny though. All men are cremated equal. <laughs> All men are cremated <laughs> equal. How much more stuff do you think you got on those guys there, Jason? Oh, I don't know. Not a ton. Should be done today. Cool. You can finally call them El Dunzo. I mean, I'm I'm just basically goofing around anyway. I didn't really intend to spend this much time on them in the first place. That is true. I remember you telling me that when you first started them. You were just like, I don't know how much time I'm going to spend on these. And then, you know, 50 some odd hours later... Well, we didn't actually spend that much time on them. They've been sitting for so long. They have been sitting. That I think a lot of it is that I'd have been better suited to just finish them back then True. than to wait till they, you know, study the night before the test like I'm doing right now. Study the night before the JP, test. JP, they'll be done because he um, is playing a game with them at Adepticon. So they'll be done. A meticulous Chaos said, years ago, Jason told me how to make a tire black paint. It was beautiful, but I forgot how I did it. Would would you happen to remember the recipe? Or wouldn't happen to remember the recipe, would you? Uh, by Dark Sea Ben. <laughs> Our Dark Sea Ben is really close. I don't remember what I would have told you all those years ago. 
unfortunately. Anything like um, even taking our current coal black with a little bit of transparent green in it and a little bit of like warm gray would do really well to give you that kind of rubbery feel. You definitely don't want a whole lot of green, but a little bit of green does the trick. My, I think the first um, cross stitch I did was for Jason, and it said, have a nice poop. Have a nice poop? No, it hangs in the bathroom. What? Yeah, it hangs in my bathroom. Well, right now it's on a shelf in the bathroom of the new house. Have a nice poop. Yeah. Yep, it says, have a nice poop. <laughs> That's so awesome. It's so good. It gets the giggles. We don't have a lot of people over to the house, but anytime we do, they're like, you can hear them giggling. <laughs> That's amazing. It's like truly awesome. Jason's color selection process is have emotions at the mini. So probably remembering a recipe is out of the question for what he painted 20 minutes ago. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's kind of how it works. <laughs> I don't remember this stuff. You move in two weeks, you're scared to own a house. Wish you well. I wish you well. <laughs> I'll just say that. Hey, P, weren't you in the news? If you have a, a, a house that has been taken care of and maintained, um, then then you shouldn't have too many problems. I've been generally pretty lucky. As the boss said, I have a metal sign that says poop here. Oh, that's equally as good. <laughs> I, have a, I have a picture of Spider-Man with his suit down taking a poop. In your bathroom? Yeah. I, awesome. I don't have it hung up yet, but I do have the, the that. That's a good one, too. Yeah. It's on, you know, the when they do, like, paintings on, like, old pieces of, like, newspaper and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those. My Christmas one, Baca, um, is a, it's like a branch, a tree branch. And it has three ornaments hanging from it. And then in big block letters, it just says balls with a period. It balls. does says balls. Yeah. The house, a business, a pokey van. Such a grown up. JP Gray said, We were in the news, Jason. Maddie B's miniatures, hello. I have another uh, another cross stitch I made that's a, a like a donkey pinata, and I said I'd hit that. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. A donkey. Pinata. It is. I said, I'd hit that. It's like a rainbow color that. donkey. Oh, it's of course it'd be rainbow so, too. It's yeah. so good. Oh my gosh. I've done. There's one of these uh, dudes that had two, like a... I, twice for two people I know who had babies. I made them one that says "Wake the baby and I'll cut you." Oh yeah! Wow! <laughs> yeah, that's that's dark. That's my kind of cross stitch. Not they your grandma's. So good. Not your grandma's cross stitch. Not she your grandma's. So, yeah, they are <laughs> they are amazing too. They're really really good. What is a cross stitch? I'm I am unfamiliar with this terminology. So it's um it's it's on fabric that mm -hmm. has like a like a really tightly woven grid kind mm -hmm. of yeah and um. You literally take a needle and embroidery floss and you make X's. Oh, okay. And so it's almost like a pixelated design. Yeah. Kind of. Interesting. Oh, the snarky cross stitch is the best. Teeny tiny victories. Um, just look up subversive cross stitch. There's tons.
All right. The wash is done. Those tanks I've, are finito. You can cross stitch on denim. I've um I've got a pair of jeans that I I just well, freehand right. yeah. did more embroidery than cross stitch, but um I embroidered uh, like little song lyrics on my jeans. Embroidered song lyrics on your jeans. Yeah. That's kind of neat. I forgot about those. They must be packed away still. I don't know that you've worn those in a long time. I haven't worn them in a long time because I think they're in a box still. <laughs> OG pixel art, exactly. Greetings from Luxembourg. Hello, I'm Luxembourg. Akia Dravik. Oh. Hello. Welcome. I, I pronounced that wrong. Awkwardish Panda, hello. Awkwardish Panda, when do you head out to Adepticon? I need a pair of jeans with a colorful donkey pinata that says, I'd hit that. I'd hit <laughs> That'd that. Be perfect. <laughs> The wide variety of other hobbies around here is pretty cool. Yeah. We have a lot in here. Um, I mean, Shelby does her her uh, crocheting. Yep. Um, yes, he does canvas painting. Yes, he bought, uh, she was telling us at lunch that she bought a Venom model. Oh, really? She wants to paint. Yep. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, I said, oh, we'll need to plan another. You said she does canvas painting? Uh -huh. That's amazing. Yep. Said we need to have another painting day. Yep. And that would be super cool to do when we are back and yeah. back to a little bit more normal. See. Yep. And we know Tim builds Gundam models. Have a little bit of fun today, painting up some solar guard custodes. Once I finished up those tanks, needed some backup fun to paint. Oh, nice. You're close enough. Okay. So you get to drive in and go home every day. That's, that's nice. Fourteen-year-old daughter loves to canvas paint. Mom has run a ceramics paint company for nearly 20 years and teaches awesome. Oh, you're seeing awkwardish. That's awesome. It's so nice to be. I mean, it's nice to be able to go home, but it's also really cool to not have to go home, you know, because then you can just hang out. Hey, somebody likes us. Yeah, when going to events, living close is a, a good, it is, I guess it is a good alternative, but being able to go and hang out with everybody yeah. and not have to feel like you got to get on the road and drive home, it's always a, a tough decision to make, but... Thank you for the follow. I think for events, generally my best case scenario is I live close enough that I can drive to the place where I'm staying at that's right next to the convention center. Because <laughs> I like staying where, like, my yeah. event is being held. Mm -hmm. Just so I can, like, st stay out late yeah, and what, I can hang yeah. out and, you know... That's why I love the, you know, Adepticon so much is it's so well set up for that sort of feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, it, it's also just a really nice hotel. Yeah, it frank. really is. And this, you know? so we've, um, the time, all the times I've been, we've stayed there except once. And yeah, that <clears throat> driving in and going home every day, we had an Airbnb offsite and it was, it was a pain. Baby J, international man of convenience. Hey, you know, <laughs> if I could be an international man of convenience, <laughs> that sounds pretty good, to be honest with you. I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, the parking there. Oh, my gosh. That is a truly <laughs> horrible thing. Yeah, the parking, no bueno. Parking is no good. Yeah, that's, uh, that one is pretty bad. Oh, Tim, for sure. Especially when you're doing something like that, where you know that, you know, 
it's going to be like a late night. And... I remember talking to somebody last year um, who mentioned that the, it sounded like they were looking at building uh, like an actual parking garage. I or... do remember that. Yeah. And I thought that they were supposed to have done that. No, well, yeah, it was supposed to have started, and they're just way behind because of COVID. That was something that was... Oh, that was before COVID? Oh, was that pre-COVID? Yeah, that was pre-COVID. Oh, wow, okay. okay. Yeah, I remember, I remember it coming up. I don't remember who I was talking to, obviously, but I do remember it coming up, and I was like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because the traffic here and... and well, not the traffic, but the, the congestion of trying to find a parking spot mm -hmm. is a nightmare. They have overflow parking. So the last time I went... Um, it was the parking like the parking lot on site is there but then also um it like just was massive so you could be parking at the event but you're really far away still yeah pre-covid so like 20 years ago feels like it sometimes <laughs> It's kind of crazy that that was like four years ago when that stuff all started. Because it was years ago when 2019 yeah, it, into 2020, it was, right? It really, was the when beginning it started. of 2020 was when everything happened. Yeah, and it um, right right before Adepticon. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah I remember because yeah, we had just gotten we, done with LVO when we got the word that Adepticon would not be happening. We didn't know until like a couple weeks before. Yep. Oh, we yeah. had, I think that's true. Yeah, yeah. we can't. I remember canceling the Airbnb, um, but we were probably going to drive that year, yeah. so we didn't have plane tickets. Yeah. Yeah. The um... COVID was yesterday and also a hundred years ago. That is accurate. <laughs> it was yesterday and also a hundred <laughs> years ago. True words have never been spoken. Four years ago last week was the lockdown in Illinois. Yeah, I was going to say it was somewhere around the 11th. Still trying to get plane ticket money back from early 2020. Wait, Oof. really? That sounds awful. That's crazy. I mean, it doesn't surprise me, unfortunately. Because, man, do uh, airlines really like to not give people yeah, money? Yeah, that's for sure. They do it. They have like policies as to if they bump you from a plane that they're supposed to give you money and they, they don't tell you about it. They're just like, I'm going to let you not know about this until you know about it. Captain Mannerings, yeah, that's definitely the case here too. That things are definitely more expensive closest to the venue. Oh yeah, that's always true. Yeah. Although I feel like Adepticon, it doesn't feel like they do things pretty good get room expensive. Blocks. Like at the at the event center, they block out their rooms and yeah. they have special rates and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. I was more or less, I think, talking about um, like the the restaurants and stuff around the convention center. Mm -hmm. Don't I don't feel like they get any extra expensive than they would be normally. No, it's not a big enough all... convention. Yeah. To... yeah, Gen Con. It's not a gougy when Gen Con is. Oh, yeah. Really? yeah, you yeah oh, yeah you get you get hosed going to Gen Con. <clears throat> They will take you for all of what you have and all of what you don't at the same time. I think Adepticon has the benefit of not being exactly in Chicago. It would be much more expensive if it were like in. Oh my in, goodness! Yeah, that's where they're talking about moving it, though. To Chicago. To Chicago, oh, wow. closer into the metro, because oh, that's the only places where you convention have larger center? convention centers. Yeah. Oh, because and they're, they're actual convention space. centers. Yeah, like it's getting so big that Hank's talking about having to move to another venue because the hotel. That. They don't know when it'll be able to get. Built yeah, are up they and... doing that second event space this year again? They had like historical. Oh, like across the, the yeah, way. Yeah, it was a different that I don't place. Know. That I, would, I, don't. I would assume so. I would assume so too. I just haven't heard any of it. I can't imagine it's getting smaller. So, no, no, no. Yeah, I can only imagine that they're having to use more and more yeah. of that every year. Mateo, hello. Holy shnikes, I made it. <laughs> it is going to be cold while we're there, though. 
rethinking your your decision to only pack shorts? You know, I'll pack a pair of pants. Okay. <laughs> Those dinners. Yeah, I might. I might. In the car. I might need them for the dinners at least. <laughs> But definitely not in the in the convention center, because it'll be no. it'll be nice and warm in there. Yeah, it'll be it'll be with all the, the bodies. Mm -hmm. The weather this week is disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> the game delay. You know what's really funny? You mentioned that now, and I just also realized that that the Roman numerals say twenty twenty four. Oh. Or 2000. I can see 24. Something like that. Or is it? Is MM? M is 1000. Yeah, but would MM be 2000 or would it be? Yes. Oh, okay. I guess I didn't know that. Well, I guess 20 is XX. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I just 30s. never count that. <laughs> 50s today, 30s for the con, 50s again on Monday. <laughs> 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 Oh, we have. Now, do you say Mateo's in here? Uh, Mateo twenty twenty four. Is that Mateo Mateo? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't think it's Mateo Mateo. Is it, is it Mateo Mateo? Mateo Mateo. Is that you, Mateo? Uh. <laughs> MM is two thousand. NMM is non metallic metal. <laughs> Correct. Not to be confused between the two. <laughs> Is Mateo getting in to tomorrow? I don't know. I didn't talk to him about his travel. No. We know a Mateo is what we're saying, but we're, yes. we're pretty sure it's not. You're not. You're a different Mateo, unless you're the Mateo from Mindwork Games. In which case, hello. In which case, hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we thought you would have been a plane on a plane. If right not, now. also <laughs> hello. <laughs> Some glaze and wash medium. Oh, uh, there was a question. Ryan Wallace wants to know where you get the giant cork stoppers. I think Amazon. Uh, actually, didn't you order these spe like from an actual? Yeah, from a scientific, place? uh, scientific machinery. Not machinery. Wrong thing. Scientific products company. The kind of place that sells beakers and stuff. Oh, I didn't realize that that's where you ordered them from. That's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, that, and then, like, um, places that service, uh, like, home wine makers, because that's the kind well, of stuff for, like, big work. wine stoppers and things like that, too, so. Uh, those of you who are going to Adepticon might might get to meet the, the Mateo Mateo. <laughs> so he'll be there. Mateo Mateo. <laughs> And is he in our booth? Or yeah. does he have his own booth? Yeah, yeah Mateo okay. will be in our booth, hanging out, talking about new models. He's bringing new models. Ooh, Ooh very cool. Um, so models that we don't yet have in the store will be on sale at AdeptCon for the first time. Ooh, that's nice. Um, those should be there. I know I got the delivery notification for those yesterday, so those are at the hotel. Um, yeah, so Mateo will be there. He'll be painting along with Mashik. Mashik from Playmon Miniatures will be at our booth. Mm -hmm. Mateo from Mind More Games will be at our booth. John Ninas may stop by. Ninas. Ben Comets. Ben will be there. Kind of a revolving door of awesome yeah. for you at this show. At this show. Hello, Wad Tomato. Wad Tomato and. All right, so I'm doing like a like a nice kind of warm white is the goal here. So I started with some burnt sienna. And I'm going to build up some dark ivory with a little bit of glaze and wash medium. Get a little bit of opacity so it's nice and soft. <laughs> Oh, 
interesting. I wonder if you could go to just like a bar or like a wine bar and ask them for old corks. I mean, if you wanted, if you wanted like regular size corks, but I don't find Please. those to be very useful for miniatures because you have to screw like a base or something on, they won't stand up. Mm -hmm. Wine corks aren't shaped right. right? Oh, okay. So you have to get jug corks. Um, numbers uh, 22 and up, like numbers 22 or 21 to 34 are what I like to have. These are Juvail, juvail.com. There you go, look at that on the website. And I don't remember what size these are. I think these might be 21s, right? So these are a good size for just your standard troop models and such. These would be great for these guys, you know? On bigger bases. And then we've got a lot of the smaller ones that are good for like space marine size stuff. And then I've got really big ones that we use for uh, much larger models. That's right. Bungs. We knew this. That's where bunghole comes from. Bungs. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Bunghole is a real thing what? related to like wine making. What? And casks. What? A hole in, in the like, in a cask. Actually? Yes. It's called a bunghole. I know. <laughs> that sounds like such a lie. Nope. It totally does. Jade, Jade, look, Jade has the word bungs written right there. Suddenly the stock for jug cork goes through the roof, sending the market into disarray. <laughs> what on earth A hole in an alcohol thinking? cask is a bung hole. So they can, they can test it and see how it's aging. So there's a hole in it so that you can you can yeah. poke like a pipette or something in there and take uh -huh. some out. I never realized that that was called a bung hole. <laughs> yeah, like that was the dirty version. <laughs> yeah. Someone it's not something they teach you in. <laughs> Beavis and Butthead really were <laughs> talking about a real thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got it from Beavis and Butthead. TP for my bunghole. TP for my bunghole. <laughs> Stick the baster in your bunghole. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds dirty. It's not. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's not. It's not. Actually, so you can place a vent on the top of the brew container for the ethanol to escape through without letting oxygen in. Oh, okay. That makes sense, too. Buttload is also a wine cask size. That one I don't believe. <laughs> Pretty sure a buttload is just a buttload. <laughs> During fermentation, the bunghole allows CO2 to escape so the barrel doesn't explode. 100% I'm, I'm being true. lied to. There's no way that this is true. I feel like Awkwardish Panda is trying to make me Google buttload. <laughs> She's trying to. <laughs> a buttload is between. Wait, is Awkwardish being? And... Huh? Is is Awkwardish being a normal chatter today? Yeah. And being rambunctious? <laughs> Normally, Awkwardish is so. A buttload is an actual measurement. It's between 450 and 1,060 liters by definition. 126 imperial gallons. <laughs> imperial gallons. A bunghole is always about gas regulation. That is true. Let's the gas out. <laughs> I'm so disturbed right now. I really am. That that I did not know that this was a thing <laughs> that I needed to know about <clears throat> or be aware of. I'm going to go tell somebody tonight. That needs to be... <laughs> I knew that about the buttload. I did not know about the buttload. <laughs> Wait, buttload is also like a real thing? Yeah. Have you not been listening to uh, all of no, these? No, I have been listening. Been I you. thought we confirmed that it was. That a buttload is. Oh, a bung load. Be, be, no, a buttload. Oh, okay. Between you heard it right the first time. 50 okay. and 1,060 liters. Okay. 126 imperial gallons. 477 liters. It's an actual unit of measurement. Sorry, I smacked the camera. <laughs> if you bottle a brew too early before the yeast is done fermenting, the bottle will explode. Yeah, that makes sense. 
I'm so disturbed about these conversations. So we literally make a buttload of paint. <laughs> I'm so disturbed. What is happening? <laughs> I'm concerned, everybody. Can we start ordering for Oak Girl by the buttload? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. It's a lot. <laughs> we just established Panda. that Our a buttload is said, a lot. I, am, I really am being my normal self. Uh, Songer wants to know what you use to stick the mini to the cork. Sticky tack? Sticky yeah, tack. Yeah, just poster tack. Good old poster tack. How much for a buttload of glaze and wash? Um, a lot. <laughs> that is a substantial sum of money to be invested in. A paint. A <laughs> paint. So we went from dark ivory, now we're going to do regular ivory. What's that color? What? Yours. What color did you just... Uh, bull like pyro red. red. Oh, just bull pyro red? Yeah, just bull so pyro red. red. I was not happy with just the crimson over uh, the mahogany, so I used the airbrush to spatter blood on there. Cool. And then I'll take the... Uh, Crimson again, really, really thin here. And then I can kind of just spot the crimson over the bold pyro. Oh, yeah, just to give it a little bit more brightness. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> it really would. Monument Hobbies, we make buttloads of pink. <gasps> Great. You mean, have we gotten there yet? It's accurate. I feel like we make a lot of paints. Again, a buttload is what someone said, like 126 gallons. Oh, we've definitely done that. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Many buttloads. Every day? A boatload a day? A buttload, buttload. a day? A buttload. A I mean, boatload is probably a different amount. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, probably. Hollywood gore look. The like fake Hollywood gore look? Yeah, like, like B movie horror, horror yeah, fake gore. That's what I was going thinking. For on these because they just didn't. Didn't pop enough when you do it realistic. So give it some more brightness and fake Hollywood blood look. <laughs> My math is right. A buttload of pearl curl will cost one million dollar one million eight hundred twenty dollars and forty five cents. I like that number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jason's like, ah, I'm in right that. We take, buy that. We take Visa, MasterCard, American <laughs> Express. Anybody would be interested in purchasing a buttload of product <laughs> from us, please let us know. We will do our best to accommodate you. The deal is you have possible. to buy you have to buy a buttload of one color. Yes. You can't mix a match. Oh yeah, good point. Buttload of wizard's butt. I mean <laughs> that is technically multiple colors. Buying it in bulk should be discounted. I mean I can I can knock the eight twenty forty five off of it for you. Oh. Oh, it's only a hundred thousand eight hundred and twenty. 
Well, then I can knock the 20 off for you. If you buy it, if you buy it in bulk. <laughs> Let me do pay in four for that? Probably. I'm just saying, if you all if you all want that pro curl that much, we can facilitate you getting that much pro curl. Yeah, see, it looks like flex of brain. Yeah. Gross. Gross. It's so good. Why why they got flex of brain? That's so gross. Well, because that's what you do when you're out ogren. Is it? Yeah, you know. It's like, hey, we got some ogren to do. Hey, mm. Sparkle Farts. <laughs> sparkle Farts. One of those must be named Sparkle Farts. Gotta be so. Sparkle Farts. Jump in. We got ogren to do. Now, here's the real good question. Which one is Sparkle Farts? This guy. <clears throat> that guy, Sparkle Farts? Yeah. You gotta put a little tattoo on his butt cheek that says SF. Sparkle this is GW. They're a, a reputable company. We don't get butt cheeks. Well, yeah, you got a little side cheek there. Not enough to to really give you the the hiding though. That's what they call me down at the corner store. Sparkle farts. <clears throat> <laughs> Why does Jason know what flex of brain looks like? <laughs> no, sparkle farts is zombies. <laughs> would she agree with that? Probably. I feel like she would. She probably would. You're talking about a girl whose favorite thing is butts. So yes. Yeah. Also fair. I still think he's singing. They're singing I will always love you even though I just murdered you. <laughs> with an yes. X. I'm okay with that. What if I don't want a buttload of paint? Maybe just a side cheek of paint? Um, we're not offering customizable quantities like that just yet. <laughs> Let us get through the first buttload and then we'll see. Let's get through the first buttload and find <laughs> out. The same reason he has a taxidermist on speed dial. <laughs> amazing. You guys are amazing. Never stop <laughs> being yourselves. Please. Red Yeti, hello. You ever need to bury a body in the desert? No better person than a freaking taxidermist. I'm a little concerned about that, but you're probably not wrong. Fucking Harder said I could probably use a buttload of warm brown. It's my favorite flavor. Fuck <sighs> Mars said I get that from Taco Bell. Warm brown? Dang, that's... A buttload of warm brown. No. Oh, that's yeah. vivid. That's <laughs> vivid. <laughs> that's pretty gross, actually. <laughs> yeah. not, not gonna lie. Yeah, I, was like, yeah. I love the fact that Jen's over there going, a buttload of warm brown from Taco Bell. <laughs> and she's enjoying it just as much as we are, by the way. Phillips, <laughs> Siebel... J you think Jason's Gorger Maw Pack is a Boys to Men cover band? I can see that. The Barbershop Quartet, but. Well, there's some Boys flexibility in that. Boys to Men is a, basically a, an R&B version of a Barbershop Quartet. So that works. Breakup Google said that's incorrect. When you bury someone in, a, in the desert, it's to get rid of evidence. A taxidermist will take the choice parts like a bit swap. They're invested. See, that's why you take them. They got something out of it. They can't deny it. And if you get stopped by the cops on the way, they'll be like, oh, this is a project. This is a... They're going to look at the human <laughs> and say this I'm is a project. Here. This is my job. My job. Yeah, so we're, they're, they're not screaming. They're singing. So much singing. Leaf painting said, I've been loving the new fluorescence. Finally, I have smooth fluorescence instead of the usual chalky or goopy mess other brands sell. Awesome. Thank Thomas, you. aren't they great? Glad that you like them. 
Gates of Paint, I just tuned in. Not sure what's going on here. Well, yeah. sometimes that's better. It's probably your usual character. <laughs> sometimes that's better. <clears throat> Honestly, I'm, I've been here the whole time, and I can't tell you what's going on either. And by whole time, she means, like, years. Years. <laughs> We're painting brain flakes. Brain flakes. Gross. Uh, Bakamaru, sorry, I may have missed the answer, but what is the plan with the rest, restodies? restodies? Are we the getting, restodies? Yeah, non-metallic metal bananas. Nope. These are these are uh, so <clears throat> there's a subfaction of custodies that I've always wanted to paint called Solar Watch which are white and gold with the red accents instead of just gold. Um, and I thought this would just be fun to mess around with a little bit since I was pretty much done with this project for the, the tanks. Hey, Henry. Good evening, everyone. Henry Cavill. <laughs> just dropping in to say hi. Oh, my gosh. It's 10 p.m. here in the U.K. Do a wonderful stream and hope you have fun at Adepticon. <laughs> Pretty soon there'll be a Keanu Reeves. Yeah, pretty soon Keanu will be And here. then the infamous... And then there was Keanu. Baby Jordan J. Lamb. <laughs> Trifo's going to use the Floros tonight for the first time. They're awesome. And uh, as... A boys to men cover band. Yeah. Archaeologists are better to hide bodies. Uh, I feel like excavators are really the ones you want. Because they come with equipment. Like a front loader. Oh, there we go, yeah. Um, for gates of paint, not sure what's going on. Ryan Wallace said, we're learning how to get buttloads of paint through the bunghole. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That pretty much sums it up. That's the TLDR. Yeah. Of today's stream. Night buttloads of, of paint Thank through the bunghole. <laughs> We need a t-shirt. We need an adult. <laughs> yeah, we also need an adult. <laughs> Gabe. Awkward is glad you're loving your Neo. It's such a great bag. Oh, Leaf, we know. We've been visited by them. For sure. They tend to come in pairs. Love the solar watch. It's been such... You know, I keep on looking at it, and I see other people try and do it. And, you know, I've always been like, eh, you know, I would want to see it done slightly different way. So I've always wanted to do it. <clears throat> uh, does Noosh work with the petroleum brown? Feels like the gloss medium dries quickly. Use more Noosh, Daniel. It definitely does work. Mm -hmm. It definitely does work. It'll work <laughs> Punisher, great. Punisher said I Googled it. It really is 10 p.m. in the UK. He might be legit. <laughs> it's really Henry Cavill. It really is him. We're good friends. Uh-oh, we have Zambies in chat. Zambies. Zambies is in chat. She was attracted by all the t butt talk. <laughs> we said butt, butt a couple times. We've and... been talking about butt loads and bungholes. Zambies. Hey, Zambies, I have adorned my weapons with the brains of your miniatures. So her her miniatures will be all brainless? Yes. With bashed what, in What heads. if there's zombies? Then it makes even more sense. I don't think there is a zombie one. If it's not the official zombies, I don't believe it. That's that's an imposter. Definitely an imposter. Yeah. You say butt three times and zombies appears. I will allow it because it sounds, looks cool. <laughs> sounds right. See this work I'm doing for you, girl? Fighting words live on Twitch. I'm going to go get a drink. Got some cool paint sets today. What? Who was this? Uh oh. Zambies? Uh oh. Yeah. What happened? Uh oh. Zambies, who's looking out for you? That was bribery to let me win the game. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> don't tell anybody. We want to keep it our secret. Remember that when you're looking at Jason across the, t the table. Let him have Who it. Who hooked you up? Let him have it. <laughs> I have no friends. You have tons of friends. They just 
may not always want to see you win. Not always. Oftentimes, yes. Always. Did you open the box, Zambi? The boxes. What? What's your favorite color? Tim said I streamed once. Does that mean I get early releases now? I mean, no. Talk to Zambies. She, she's streamed way more than once. Do you feel that she would think that's fair? Available at Adepticon until they're not. <clears throat> and then on the site late April, early May. We're shooting for April 25th. Shooting for April 25th, but we're not officially saying April 25th. If you know what I mean. Bravo O four Tango, thank you for the sub. Thank you. Well, Welcome. Huzzah, huzzah. I'll just throw back my legs and pollute my britches with delight. Awkwardish Panda making the uh, smart decision to leave room in the Neo for planned paint purchases. Oh, <laughs> nice. Eighteen slots, perhaps. Don't worry, there's also room in the back of the bag. Uh, Source wants to know if you're using rich gold, Jordan. I will be using rich gold. Right now I'm starting with a base of um, dark bronze. Um, I really like laying down a really dark... It does look darker because it is. It does look darker because it is. Um, with, with metallic, specifically golds, so I really like to build up from darker colors before just going straight to rich gold. It also gives you a really good base to start from to build up your um, <clears throat> your brighter golds from. Um, I might even just do this shoulder pad here so you can get an idea of kind of where I'm going with it. Bravo, missed the pain announcement. Other than the Depticon release, what else are we in for? We have two additional signature paint sets. One is with Flame On miniatures, and one is with Rogue Hobby. And they are shown on their, their social media, if you follow them. Where else do we have those colors shown? In our Discord? Yeah, in our Discord. Tomorrow, tomorrow is your birthday. Well, happy birthday. Whoa, tomorrow's your birthday. I am sorry that I will not be on stream to be here to wish you a happy birthday. Have you once again stolen so, the blue? Uh, yeah, our Discord has, Discord, um, somebody took a screenshot when we were showing them on a recent stream, and then our YouTube will have a video, multiple videos probably, where we've um, shown them. Sammy's open them. Dark hot pink is pretty sweet. I like that one. Dark hot pink is amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It was what I really just went to town with doing the underpainting of the flesh for this guy when I started. It just gives such a really good basis for the, like a, a magenta that has a little bit more pop to it. Although it is off. Bakamara said maybe Jason will let me give him $100 for my birthday. Uh, Wait, what? Maybe Jason will let me give him $100 for my birthday and he sends me paints? Don't uh... give it to Jason. So wait, let me get this straight. You give me $100 for your birthday? Yeah. I'm down. Well, and then sounds we like send a deal paints. for me. You have to then give him paint. See? That sounds like a pretty good deal, doesn't it? <laughs> you get it. Yeah, don't get Jason one. <laughs> Jen's like, no. <laughs> don't what, do that. What am, I, what am I not doing? <laughs> I'm not giving people paint? I mean, you're going you're gonna to assign that task to one of us, so let's just cut the middleman out. <laughs> oh. Give me the $100. Oh, I see what is going on here. Yeah. I recognize the issue now. The issue is that these people are smarter than I thought they were. <laughs> I 
Yeah, you can you can pass off getting that set situated. I'll I'll take care of that for you, Jason. <laughs> I will definitely get those paints sent out. I'm sure that hundred dollars is in the mail somewhere. Dark Hunter, I'm most excited for the Rogue Hobbies, Louise Sugden ones. Yes, they are. Yeah, they're good colors. I cannot Jen wait. Jen approved. To get everybody to get their hands on it. You guys can see as I'm putting this rich gold on top of the, the dark bronze, how nicely it highlights up. Kind of covering about half of the the dark bronze as I go through here. Kind of using this as a highlight, even though it's the, the bulk of the color. That's so why you keep the, the gold nice and rich and deep looking without a ton of layers tim people can are going to be allowed to buy more than one set so they absolutely can purchase for friends yeah so just contact somebody guys. in discord we have an adepticon group in discord yep or or page hey, room, likes room. Us. what i don't know what you call those things but discord channel. room channel channel discord channel uh for adepticon uh definitely contact somebody in there and see if they'll pick it up for you Jason is painting the Gorger Maw Pack from, I can't remember the game. Warcry. Warcry. It's actually Gorgers, but it looks like Gorger. Gorger Maw Pack. It's Gorger Maw Pack. It is definitely the Gorger Maw Pack. There are no Gorgers also here. Also known as the world's best barbershop quartet. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and Game Delay wants to know what model is Jordan painting? This is a uh, Adeptus Custode from Warhammer 40,000 slash 30k. Slash maybe before then? Awkward Panda, the days. booth opens at 10. Um, there will be a line. We have one register, so if you're there Thursday morning, you should be fine. I will be there demoing the paints so people can see what they look like as well. So if you have questions, feel free to come by and ask. I am more than happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, source does, do you guys use plastic glue or only CA? Only CA. Only CA. Got no space in my life for anything else. I would be disappointed if someone buys 20 sets in front of me and they run out. I feel like we wouldn't let someone buy 20. No, we're not letting people bulk up like that. Yeah. You can buy like, you know, I would say I'd cut it off at four. Yeah, four seems reasonable. You know, I can't see anybody like if they convince us they're buying for like their whole community back at their shop, maybe we'd let them buy five or six, but their stores are going to get it, yeah, it very the, soon. So the there's no need to bulk up. There's no need to bulk up. Buy one set for yourself. You know, don't think about in four months that you're going to run out of that color. You'll be able to get it in four months, you know. And do not scalp them, please. Scalp them. <laughs> I would I would be genuinely disappointed That's in anybody who did that. not friendly hobby behavior. Yeah. I know it goes without saying, but sometimes... Play just in case. Eggy Grip, no tasting station this year. <clears throat> or next year, or ever. But, if you want to put the paint on a brush and then touch the brush to a model, we have that available.
Necronomicon, I'm not going either. So, you're in good company. You're in good company. <laughs> Will we ever have nice scents for the paint? No. <laughs> We're not adding fragrances. No. <laughs> Remember, folks, you're supposed to paint miniatures with yeah. your paint. <laughs> you're not supposed to eat it. You're not supposed to put it anywhere other than on your models or on the hobby thing that you're painting on, be it careful, canvas or whatever. Careful, you just painted Shelby's fingernails. I, that's why I'm saying, hey, I'm being careful <laughs> here, okay? I'm being careful. <laughs> No, I, I won't be streaming while everyone's gone because everyone's gone and I have to work. <laughs> everyone's gone and I have to work. I'm gonna have I'm gonna be busy. <laughs> Real talk though, patrolling brown is pungent. The pungent. gloss the gloss will have a different smell than the mats. So it and dark crimson will smell a little different. Get yourself a gas mask. If More latexy. It's fine. Don't do that. If it smells funny, don't smell it. Christopher Williams said, what's the deal with the gap filling stuff? Is it just thin super glue? The gap, our glue? I think so. It's CA glue. It's actually a little bit thicker. It's not like the super gel stuff that you find, right? Um, but it has a higher, um, I call it bridging strength. That's not a, a scientific term. Its viscosity is such that it doesn't tend to retreat as much. So you can put it in a gap, hit it with uh, water um, if you're doing pre-built or if you're at the pre-paint stage um, or uh, uh, speed cure. What's that stuff? You know, any uh, of the, what is this stuff called? Insta-set. Uh, oh, Insta-set. <laughs> right. Any of those types of things. Um, and it just feels better. Right? I call it bridging strength because it means that it will uh, sit across a gap a lot easier. It won't just uh, soak in like water. So it's a little bit more viscous, but not quite like a gel. So it doesn't give you a super high dimension to it, you know? Yeah. It'll flow into that recess relatively easily, but it won't flow through the recess. So you can actually use... <clears throat> you can use it to, to fill those gaps. Is activator what it's called? Whatever. Instaset. Activated. TC Gentry huffing paint is not back in vogue, no. And game delay, fortunately, all of the people who process the orders are going to remain here. So continue all, continue to buy paint. Do not hold back on my account. And break up Google, we, uh, it, stream is looking great on our end. We're not dropping any frames or anything like that right now. So maybe oh, yeah. refresh. We're solid. If my fingers aren't stuck to something after I use it, I don't believe in the glue's effectiveness. <laughs> also true. <laughs> oh my gosh, I had that happen to me the other day with a brand new bottle of glue. I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot how how good glue how will really get you to stick to yourself. Yep, Shelby will be away, so grab your right-handed paintbrushes. Whoa, 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 whoa. We only do left-handed paintbrushes. Shelby only does left-handed. I feel like this is... You're an EE? Electrical engineer? Oh, dang. What was an EE? I had no that idea. That was, was my thinking, too. That sounds right. Only because I worked with him for decades.
would they be inhaling not great chemicals? EEs don't really, other than when like uh, capacitors and stuff explode. Yes, electrical injury. I was going to say, if you're working on like circuit level stuff and capacitors and diodes and really capacitors. Yeah. Jack Tim said, I'm a TD. All right, here we go. I think the scrub stuff looks pretty good there. And now you know what time it is. What time is it? It's time where we paint the surround of the bases bright green. Oh, whoa, gosh. Please, no. No. Okay. We're not really doing that. <laughs> <laughs> We're not really doing Ooh, it. Jason freaking me out there. Yeah, we're not really doing it. Not quite. Painting them black. Oh, yeah. Why That's would, the why final would step, green folks. green be bad? It means they're done. Well, well, why would green be bad? Um, Because it doesn't Just look green. Just because it's not a thing. Uh, they're supposed okay. to be black. So, back in the day, uh -huh. back, like, early 2000s, even earlier, maybe? 90s? Earlier, yeah, 90s. Um, 90s the... is back in the day. 2000s is not. Okay. So back in the day, <laughs> uh, miniature hobbyists would often paint their base rims in bright green, the color called goblin green. Um, and if you look at like old pictures of painted Warhammer miniatures, they will all have these ugly green bases. Why? And the only reason <clears throat> was because the only thing we had to play games on were felt mats. Oh, so it blended in. So it green felt in. mat is what you had, yeah. and green base rims got rid of the base rim. Yeah. Got it. Was the, the idea. Yeah, although black would have looked probably better. better. When you paint models to have your models look good, paint the rims black. Contrast brings all the eye up to the colors you've spent so hard putting on the model. Yep. Instead of the green that sticks out like a sore thumb on the base. I really hate it. Christopher Williams said, if you had to choose a Space Marine chapter, which would you choose? Uh, 30K, 40K. So, yeah, we open to everything in all time? Yeah. That's a tough that's, one. That's an important distinction to make. Because I have an answer for 40K. Uh, I'd have to think about 30k for a second. Although, recently I think my mind has been changing on 30k. Mm. Dark Hunter said it wasn't just the rims, it was even the bases. No room for creativity. I think you weren't even allowed in an official GW tournament back in the day if you didn't do that. Oh, I don't know anything about that. There's been people putting sand on bases for eons. And he said, let's go with 40k. 40k, Black Dumbler. Mm -hmm. Black Templar, says he. Mm -hmm. Oof. 40K, huh? Christopher, are you looking for a why or just the answer? Because Jordan had an answer immediately, but he didn't yep. explain it. Oh, I mean, I can I explain if it you, if you like. I don't know. I'm not sure. If it's just, um, just well, a Jason... poll or if it's... Yeah, so while Jason thinks about his his chapter, I can give you a little bit of explanation on why my choice is the way it is. Um, to start with, I think they look really cool. I think they're one of the most uniquely expressive um, factions amongst the, or chapters amongst the Space Marines. I think they have a lot of really, really cool iconography. That... We need to start with the fact that he's really a heretic and he likes chaos. I do like chaos. They have I'm... the most chaos -y loyalist marines. Are they? Yeah. Oh, well. They're like word bearers, but... I guess that's kind of true. But they don't tote demons around with them. Well, <laughs> not all, also not true. The black sword, mm, questionable. <laughs> Ghost Hunter said, I'd choose a different game if I had to choose a space marine. Chapter. Lumberjack Tim says, I would choose a game, would that's, choose fun. A game that's fun. I would choose a game that's fun. You negative Nancys. <laughs> Space Marines are cool no matter how well the game plays at any time. True. Just going to say it flat out. Space Marines are just damn cool. Oh. Everybody copies them. 
There have been whole Kickstarters by people who are only known because of 40K, who have robbed 40K and made money off of Space Marines that aren't Space Marines. So let's get honest here. Let's be real people. The, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, oh, that's such a hard one. Blah. You know, for the longest time, it would have been Soul Drinkers because the, the Soul Drinkers story, I really dug those books back when I first read them. They're not the best books, but the story of them was pretty cool. Um, and uh, yeah, popular does equal cool technically. <laughs> Majority win on that one, right? That's the whole idea <laughs> with, with, with what cool is. Doesn't mean it's cool to you. Dark Angels, yeah. I think Dark Angels would have to be my my choice if not Soul Drinkers. For me, it's mostly story though, and I don't care for the Dark Angels story as much. I just got finished reading The Lion, Son of the Forest. And uh, it's okay. It's interesting with all of the fallen that he is collecting. So I'm interested to see where that goes, but... Did I, uh, did I tell you that I started reading uh, a Horse Heresy book? Which one? The first one? Uh, Horse Rising? No, I actually dipped into a, a faction-specific book to start with. Um, Why would you do such a thing? Because I'm interested in Alpha Legion. So I started reading the Alpharius book. Does this mean you're going to stop painting all the armies you haven't finished and make Alpha Legion? Maybe. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm not. <laughs> I got nothing. Hey, <sighs> look. I finished an army. What? Not just model. Finished an army. There we go. Ta-da. Definitely a boy band. Definitely, Definitely a, boy a boy band. band. They're working out their choreography right Nice. Now. <laughs> Jason's enjoying a nice, a nice sit down. I'm done. He finished his project. My project is done. He deserves Comfy a seat. Comfy chair. Comfy chair time. Yep. So I'm going back in here with a little bit of bright ivory to punch some of the highlights of the white in here. Oops, chair went away. Okay. Chair's blue, Chris. Fired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris just can't catch a break it's with something this. something about the wall. Chris, you're fired. Because <laughs> the other one is in front of that painted out window. And it definitely doesn't have as much glare, I think. Hi, Christopher. You looking in the window? Yeah. Fired. <laughs> Hi. Fired. No? He's Shake. not fired? He's he shaking took his, his hat head. off because I got his full mane in effect. I know. I could see it oh, through really? the window. Seismic Unseen. Uh, it'll be the end of April. Maybe beginning of May, but probably more like the end of April. Christopher Williams, you really love the first Dark Angel books. You really like the background story to them. I love the idea of their home planet being, you know, tainted with chaos and them growing up as knights fighting chaos without knowing it the whole time. That part is interesting, right? Because it has a very King Arthur vibe. It's very Arthurian legend. Which is cool. Right. So that part I'm not mad at. Um, Thank you for the follow, Typo Man Sandy Ravage. Typo Man Savvy Ravage. What? <laughs> That's amazing. Sandy Ravage. Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> typo Man. Brand Sandy Ravage. Sandy Ravage. <laughs> I love that it's Typo Man. I get the pun. That's hey, amazing. Griff, I um, uh, I would. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really as qualified <clears throat> to do this as someone in news production. She's super qualified. 
She could run the the late show. I mostly forget. I, I did uh, remember. I'm pretty proud of myself that I remember just now to switch it over to just one painter. To just what? To switch it over to just Jordan <clears throat> on the screen. You See, I, I think so too. You never. Jen discounts herself heavily. I agree. So thank you for noticing oh, how great you. she is. <laughs> Thank you awesome. for noticing how great she is. She does that an amazing job of serious. holding, of uh, like herding cats around here. She does a gentastic job. Aww. Also correct. Thanks, Tim. Also correct. That's a serious business chair. There is. Which one? The one I'm in? Yep. There's another one right there. It's a, it's a pair. We got a pair of them. These are the comfy chairs. We got these for a price you don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> I know about it, and I wish I didn't know about it. These are like motorized, reclining, big, leather, comfy chairs. Like, this and they is, are comfy. This is Jason's favorite thing is to, to tell people how much the chairs cost. I like <laughs> getting a such deal. A bargain. It's I like love... there's a meme. There's a meme about you know like there there are certain women when you compliment them they're gonna tell you about a bargain that they oh, got. Yeah. Like, oh, I really love your skirt. Thanks, I got it for ten dollars. Oh my gosh. <laughs> big Bob, I will turn this car around. <laughs> The Dark Making Angels lore is also days, heavily steeped in queer history. Awkwardish, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a big stretch, but I'll let you have it. <laughs> One of your favorite parts of Dark, yeah, that's community lore with the whole. Because it's based on like it was the he was the Arthurian side of it, but you know so much of this stuff is developed without a plan. So it'd be interesting to get like the ghosts of GW past together and have them tell you if it was more than just hey we got high one day <laughs> and came up with this. We got high one day, and you know, because because there's all the stories of people walking into the the studio with books they had just read, saying oh we got to use this, you know. That's fine. That's fine. Rogue Hobbies has done some interesting videos on GW history, including some looks at Space Marine fashion. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, she worked at, at uh, Forge World for a long time. I say a long time. Two years, something like that. Maybe longer. Painting all the inner bits of the undersuit padding in black. The horrible parts of Space Marines. You get the armor color just right, and then you got to paint the ribbing, the, the, the scuba suit. It is really satisfying when you just... Yeah, when you just nail it. Nail it, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, this part is actually... The butt part is one of my favorite parts to get. Hey, this is a family channel. We were talking about much worse <laughs> things earlier today. No, we weren't. No, we, we weren't. Were we were talking about, about things. Fermenting alcohol. Yep, okay. fermenting alcohol, bungholes. Okay, and, so uh, the but, area around butt the bunghole. Buttloads in the bunghole. Is really satisfying. Lumberjack Tim Fuse, paint. did you catch your old joke in the Discord this morning? Aren't all your jokes old? See what I did there? See what I did there? Ha <laughs> ha! Ha ha! Game Dilly wants you to know he's a boob man, Jordan. I'm sorry, what? I don't know. I said, I'm a boob man, baby J. All right. <laughs> All right. I got nothing against that. I heard someone mention a butt. There are many butts in the world. You're talking about a buttload. There are buttloads of butts in the world. I think that buttloads would be the correct <laughs> measurement for butts. <laughs> I mean, it's more of a liquid measure. Depends on how... Yeah, the, the Primarch of the Dark Angels was not Lionel Johnson in the beginning. That was changed. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Who was it? I don't remember what the name was. You have to look back. I did not realize that that changed. That's yeah, so much of that stuff has changed over the years. Stories written as they fleshed it out. As they, I mean, you know, let's be honest. As it grew legs and they knew they had to create something more tangible for all these things they'd made. True. You know, yeah, it's one true. thing to have uh, rogue trader dudes in armor like Starship Troopers running around called Space Marines. 
And then when you had to make them superhumans, and then you had these stories that why did they become superhumans? And then the emperor of mankind and all this stuff had kind of grown out of the narrative that had started before, you know, that really existed. So it's pretty funny. Butts for the wind at Zambies. Yeah, Dark great. Hunter. The lore is so different. Because everyone has them, even animals. Cute little butts. And even as you read through the Space Marine stuff, uh, initially even the sidebar stuff in the old magazines uh, has changed tremendously too. That's why I was so excited for the whole Horus Heresy run of books. You know, it started in the early 2000s, mid-2000s, and then all the way up until, what, two months ago when they finished it finally? <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know? And you, you get the, uh, the lore that we can consider to be canon for now. I'm sure they'll screw it up and change something here pretty soon, but. I have to admit, the, uh, it was really interesting. One of the things, like I said, I started reading the Alpharius book. And I love that, you know, because it's the whole, like, I'm not Alpharius. I'm definitely Alpharius, because he's like, his whole thing is I'm, maybe I'm not me. Um,. The, like, the first line of the book is, like, I am Alf I'm Alfarious. This is a lie. <laughs> and then the book starts. <laughs> it's a very, very interesting way to, to start a book. I thought it was really cool. <clears throat> Corgi butt is the best. Corgi butt. Corgis are just super cute. They are one of the cutest dogs that can be dogged. Gosu made it just in time for the end. Is it really? Oh my goodness, it is. Yeah, I didn't think the Alpharius yeah, book was all that great. I'm enjoying it so far. The uh, Legion is a good book. That one is a good book or is not? Is. Okay. I do have that one as well. Yeah, Legion is a good book. And of course, the Alpha Legion play a part in the third to the last or second to last. Well, I don't know. A few of the last uh, Siege of Terror ones. Hi, the story of them, not Good necessarily night. them, but. Jade, take it easy. See you, Jade. We will see you um, the day Couple after days. tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be there not on Thursday. Friday. Thursday, oh, Friday. the day after the day after tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, the Primark books, most of them don't really give you what you wanted. Um, the uh, Lorgar stuff, talking about his childhood, and then to the time the Emperor finds him and stuff is, is pretty good. Gives you a lot of insight into his whole world. I didn't read a lot of them because I felt like they were some of the most boring books in the series. Source is asking, Baby J, will you finish that plume today? He's interested to see how you do it. Sure. I can do the plume today. Yeah, go Sue, exactly. The giant prayer buggy in the desert. Yeah. Again, finding out that uh, that so many of these places were... Uh, I want to say infected, but they, they were cursed by the, the powers of chaos before anybody was really exposed to what that was is very interesting. It's not something that's explored a whole lot. It's almost like they can't make up their mind. Is chaos something that seeps through the, from the warp side or does it already exist here? And that's like, then they're like, you know, places that are, the veil between realities is thinner on certain planets, you know. Which red is that, Jordan, that you did? Uh, that is burnt red. Burnt red, source. Yep. Boined. It's boined. Boined. Boined red. How'd you do the white armor? The white armor is uh, three colors. Technically four. Uh, it is burnt sienna. There's a base over black primer. And then from there, it's dark ivory with and then ivory, and then bright ivory. Uh, the bright ivory, so the dark ivory and the ivory was done with an airbrush. Um, the regular ivory was just done in like little areas like the center of the chest here and the top of the, the helmet to really like punch up the brightness a bit. 
uh, and then the bright ivory I'm doing by hand um, in areas like this, like in the, the faceplate here, just to punch up little bits of contrast. Areas on like the helm here. And then let's see here. So now that that plume is starting to dry, well, I might actually give it another minute. I don't want to mess around with it while it's still wet. I'll paint these gauntlets really quick. That I'm going to see tomorrow or Thursday for sure. Malev, hello. Look forward to seeing you. I'll be in late on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Source Malev will be there as well, is what he's saying. This is some warm brown I'm using for the, the leather. I'll be in late Thursday. I'll get to the show floor before it closes. Probably like three or four, depending on how long it takes to not late. get my luggage. Not, well, late be in terms of the show floor closes at six, so it's yeah. late. Is it the warp and expression of how emotions of sentient, uh, of the emotions of sentient races, how separate is it from the more material universe, mesophysics of fiction, I guess? I don't know. It's just the MacGuffin, right? We're going to pull some red oxide here. This is one of the colors in the Adepticon set. Like we mentioned before, this is a set you will be able to get either this weekend at Adepticon while supplies last, or um, hopefully April 25th or shortly thereafter. We're just gonna use this to bring up some of these highlights. I create a little bit of a, a volume highlight on this top part of the plume here. They trusted you to show them the plume and then you used colors they can't have <laughs> soon if the warp is what we make it i don't think that's the case i don't know i mean again we're talking about fictional nonsense that even the company that that talks about it changes it all the time <laughs> oh so i don't know if anyone knows what that means i don't know what that means. what it goes through five pounds sterling and six pence Pick me up some Pro Curl paints at Adepticon on top of the regular cost. So it's like a tip. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I just wrote it. All right, we're going to flip it around. We're going to hit this side now. Baka, just go on the Discord. Go, the Discord. go into the uh, Adepticon channel and see if anybody will be willing to pick you some up. If there's people with extra luggage space or who are driving who know you in Discord, then that's what that whole channel's for. Meetups while you're there, or if you can't go. <clears throat> theoretical nonsense. There's no such thing as theoretical nonsense. There <laughs> is just nonsense. I'm I'm inclined to believe you there. Theoretical nonsense is the name that nonsensical people give their speech. <laughs> yeah. To make it sound like they know what they're talking about. Yep. Well, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. You just made your hobby purchase for the month. You have lot. You have rats to paint. Rats. <laughs> Awkward is like okay, fair. <laughs> A 
Oh my God, it's it's really irking me. The I, I, I there's something wrong with me, chat. I know this doesn't come as a surprise to any of you, but the fact that now that we're getting the three body problem on Netflix or whatever it is, and and it's garnering so much attention. Is it? Well, yeah, because the book was like you know, uh, said to be the best science fiction ever by like Barack Obama, as if he's some sort of uh, science uh, fiction expert. Science fiction expert. <laughs> And it's a book that I just, I think there's something wrong with me because I read it and I'm like, what are you people talking about? This is like literally right up there with the Scientology guy's science fiction book. It's horrible. <laughs> it's as bad as everything. Awkward as you're a nerd for where stories come from. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Well, there's a difference between a story coming from something in narrative concept, right? And having like mythology or... Uh, communal storytelling and ancestral knowledge developing into fiction or stories like that and simply robbing a name from a book, right? Avian, it's that bad? It's that bad. Like when you said nonsensical or theoretical nonsense, that's what made me think of the three-body problem. <laughs> it's somebody who speaks like they know stuff and then just tells a bunch of nonsense. It's just a book of nonsense. All right, so Daniel Salucci said, if you're throwing down, what's the best science fiction then? Oh, I mean, I'm not one that's going to tell you what the best science fiction is, because that's very subjective, right? You just know it's not that one. We can Real DiCaprio, you hated the three-body problem trilogy too, the dehydrated aliens are boring. It was just, the premise is just so borked. So borked. So borked. I was I was pretty blown away. Who was it that was interviewed the other day? Oh my gosh. It was a filmmaker. And he was asked what his top movies of all time would be. And my god, if it wasn't like spot on, it was it, he said uh, uh Apocalypse Now, which is on mine. Uh 2001, which is on mine. Blade Runner, which is on mine. And then he had a, a fourth movie because he said top I think they said top 3 and he he had to have four. She said Blade Runner was tied with something else. And I was like, I didn't know the other movie. But I was like, oh, my soulmate. My soulmate. Well, we but had a nice run. I when guess. We had a nice run, Jen. <laughs> Jen can't stand science dread. fiction, and I'm okay with that. I thought I was your soulmate. But the, uh, the, well, yeah, but like my sci fi nerd soulmate. Yeah, okay. I can't even remember who it was. So you see how important it was to me. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I don't know. Best science fiction is a rough one, right? Because okay. you could you could you could treat the best as like who built the world that has the most traction in science fiction, you know. And there's a ton of big anthologies and and uh, space opera type stuff. But if you don't like that kind of stuff, then those might not appeal to you. Necronomicon said that the three that Netflix's three body problem is developed by the same guys that dropped the ball on Game of Thrones. Yep, so that's I'm another reason why oh. I'm really not interested in oh, it. Oh yikes! Really? Whoa, how'd they ever get another job? Yikes. Maybe I think they got that job before they were done with Game of Thrones, right? Well, they had the... <laughs> no, they had the Star Wars job that they then lost. <clears throat> oh, that's right. Yeah. Because they were going to do Star Wars. Anyone who's our age and male will have Blade Runner as a top film. It's just a great piece of storytelling. Even without... Especially, I think, because, you know, special effects weren't near what they are today. But it's still one you go back and watch, and it holds up. It, yeah, because it's not even about the special effects. No. The story is but the setting so and the timing that they did, they set the standard for, like, that dingy kind of post-apocalyptic almost sci-fi world. Yes. It was just perfect. Oh, that's a book for Jordan. Daniel what? Salucci said, have you read Children of Time? Excellent sci-fi. Makes you like spiders. Ooh, uh, I was going to tell Jordan he needs to play that game Limbo. Because uh, it, it has spiders? big old spiders in it. No. <laughs> no, we we don't have to do that, Jason. We don't... We, we, don't, we don't need to do that. No, 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 no. We don't, we don't need to do that. He's probably thinning a bit with the red, but not much. It's, it's just dampness on my brush. It really is not a whole lot. Beyond what I'm doing here. That's right. Yeah, the, those guys, uh, people had the Star Wars movies, yeah. I forgot all about that. They lost the ability to do them, so. 
So they screwed up Game of Thrones because they got excited to do Star Wars and then they didn't get to do Star Wars and now we're left with them doing the three body problem. Exactly. Exactly. Tim, what pet did you get? Oh, your spiders? I see where this is going. All right, so I'm going to mix a little bit of golden brown. You hate Deckard the older you get? Why is that? Into our orange red. Why is that? Yeah, science fiction for me, like the moat in God's Eye is fantastic, Larry Niven. It'll it'll always be, I think, one of the quintessential sci-fi stories. Um, I really like, in more modern stuff, I like the Hyperion series. I'm on Endymion right now, so I'm not really deep into that. But fantastic sci-fi, good world building. Yeah, you've been liking it a lot when you were reading it. Yeah, I keep I keep stopping it, though, to inject other books. Like, another book will come out. Like, I stopped reading Endymion to finish the the Siege of Terra books, the Horus Heresy stuff, for the end of the death. I mean, you kind of... You have, have to. to. Yeah. And, uh, and then I did uh, The Son of the Forest. It was okay. I hate that the Loyalist Primarchs are just, like... Boring. Boring. Yeah. Like they've made them nothing. They don't give them any attention for their their story being all powerful like the the chaos ones, like poor Mortarian and his bad decisions and you know, I mean all the chaos guys are are, you know, daddy issues, bad decisions. And it doesn't seem like the the, the main point that they kept making about uh the lion throughout the Son of the Forest is that he's old and tired. <laughs> that's so weird he doesn't have a Xenos girlfriend the internet has a Xenos girlfriend <laughs> Daniel Solushi what's a great mashup of the Iliad Brave New World and the Tempest what's up Jabe Ancillary Justice Trilogy by Anne Leckie is one I love. It has the most creepy aliens I've read. I'm not familiar with it. Is it called Ancillary Justice? One of the books, like the first book? Simmons is great. Um, I really like the... the um, oh. Good God, I'm not going to remember what they're called now. If you want... Really tremendous sci-fi. I will bust out my phone. I will tell you. You're going to read sci-fi to us? No. Yes. Today, I will be reading you a book the from Alistair Reynolds. This is going a lot heavier towards the, the golden yellow, or golden brown, rather. Excuse me. The last one I read was Elysium Fire, and it's, uh, I forget what the series is called. Prefect Dreyfus emergencies that are all told in a uh, a world that Reynolds has created called you gotta do it in a Christopher Walken voice I think Absolution Gap was part of them, hang on Revelation Space I think Alistair Reynolds may be one of my favorite sci-fi writers of all time, and that's saying something. His books are amazing. But Dan Simmons is good, too. There's tremendous writers. There's lots of great modern sci-fi. I'm all about, like, world building. I like being injected into a world that seems new. Seems to have its own life. Which I know anybody that's reading books, oh, that's a big mean, thing. You mean like it's a unique idea of a world rather than a... Yeah, they can take... Because, you know, everybody says there's nothing new, but there is, right? There's yep. ways to take all the old tropes and polish them up, toss them back out there, and have them, you know, be completely new again. Different combinations of things. And that's, and that's what I think Dan Simmons, Alistair Reynolds... Because that's what I really loved about, like, Larry Niven growing up, even Heinlein... 
uh, Asimov. All right, and then last step is a little bit of pure golden brown. Down the center line for the plume. That's Osrin. nice. Osrin, that's awesome. Simple, low plume. Sorry, I wish you could make it to Adepticon as well, though. Not too punchy or crazy. Filled to the brim with our paint. That's awesome. Frank Herbert, Avian. Well, yeah. I mean, Dune's getting a lot of press right now, obviously. And Dune was a, a, a good world. I, I really have to say, though, Dune, while being a spectacular novel, the series is rough when you start getting later in the books. And his son and Kevin J. Anderson really brought it back to life for me. I know a lot of people hate that, but that's... Kevin J. Anderson is a good world builder. His books get a little long in the tooth sometimes. I like Saga of the Seven Sons is pretty good. Uh, that and then also the two. Oh, there's a couple things. We decided we're not doing that. Oh. We're not going to fight with it. Just Great. deal with the one you got. Woo. Dune okay. was a teenage favorite. Yeah, me too. Okay. Me too. Andy Weir, Project Hail Mary. I have not read it. Lord Dury, thank you for the follow. Hello, welcome. Yeah, I love that Dune is is having this resurgence with a bunch of people that hadn't experienced it earlier. I am reading through it right now. Hey, somebody Tony the Tiger. This. Tony the Tiger. Never tried any of Anderson's novels set in his own worlds after some really, really bad Star Wars novels he wrote hey, back in the 90s. Did he write bad Star Wars novels? The Saga of the Seven Sons is really good. It's seven very long books, well worth the read. Then he came back and did a sequel to the Saga of the Seven Sons that was three books long and was literally just like a retelling of the first one. It was kind of boring, so I was disappointed in that. The name of the aliens is kind of stupid in the books, but... It's funny how you have some writers that have come out and their freshman attempt will be really hot and then they'll kind of, their ideas get used up early. So they burn bright and then fade out. And then some just take a long time to get started because they really just need to learn their chops of writing. You know? But I think that, I don't know. My, my, uh, what would you call it? My gut instinct is that I probably prefer writers who are super creative and have no idea how to write because their books are only going to get better. Yeah. I think creativity is Does way that make more sense? important yeah. than writing chops. Because writing chops can be learned. Oh, Andy Ware I know from The Martian, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Martian was a great book. The movie was also really good. Dune is the book you're bringing to the con as, as your reader. Spitfire, what's going on? Close. Yeah, I had just, uh, prior to the original, or, or doing the first movie coming out, I had finished a lot of the series again. I do really bad because I read it in chunks. And uh, after the first movie came out, I went back and read all the, the school books. And was bummed because I forgot how badly Navigators ends. Something for downtime when you need to D people. Got to wash all the con off of you. Get the con out of your brain. That's funny. What a, what a phrase. 
Brandon Sanderson had some of the most unique magic systems I've seen in a long time. I just can't read him. I can't read him. He he browbeats you with too much nonsensical stuff that isn't really necessary to make the book move forward. He's the male and rice, is what I've always said. Alright, we're gonna do one last thing. Am I bringing any mechs with me? No, I'm just bringing my uh, my Warcry Warband, I think. I could pile some mechs in there if you wanted to throw down some battle tech. More theoretical nonsense. Got me so, stuck on that word now. The male and rice. Taking the leftover... I got that right, ones. right? Anne Rice wrote The Mummy, right? Yeah, Anne Rice is writing his garbage when trying to actually dig through it for the, the sweet spots. So I'm mixing up the leftover brown wash that I had with a little bit of flesh wash and... <laughs> Calling someone Anne Rice, that's brutal. A lot. <laughs> is, that, is that bad? A lot more glaze and wash. Am I the room. bad guy? People love Sanderson and his stuff, and I think because he does create some of the best fantasy worlds out there, that I can give him, right? I just, like, the thing that frustrates me about certain Arthur, even Anne Rice, like reading The Mummy, I really wanted to read it. It was a good story. I couldn't get through it because it's like her writing style just bums me out. And that's what Sanderson is. Um, you told me to read a book. What was it called? Malazan? Yeah. Is that him? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, no, no. That's a... Oh, what's the author's name? Um, it's Eric, Aaron, Stevenson, something like that. I don't know. Oh, maybe I compared him to Sanderson. Maybe that's probably what it was. Yeah, those are different authors, though, for sure. Throwing well, this in the wash. I was running. Thank you for this up. Over the whole thing. Get a little bit of definition to the recesses of the plates. This is really thin. You notice I put a lot of glaze and wash medium in there <clears throat> so that it would flow over and not tint the surfaces as much. You can't get through Lord of the Rings. That's interesting because those are fast reads. But Tolkien can also get a little into things that don't feel like they're progressing the story. So I can see that. I think that my love of Tolkien comes because as a child reading those and just falling in love with them and having them be such a big part of my life, there's never a time where I wouldn't be able to sit down and read The Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit. The Silmarillion's rough because it's more of a history book, more like an almanac than a, a work of fiction. You're surprised no one has mentioned the culture novels? What are the culture novels? That's not so bad. Oh, Captain Mannerings, maybe not. I just, you know, I don't need infinitesimal description of the doorknob engraving to progress the story. And I feel like that's what those authors do. It feels like word salad to fill pages with more words. Because it's like, hey, this person's getting paid by the word. Right? We all know what I mean when I say that, right? If you've read an author and you're like, oh, yep, they get paid by the word. <laughs> and that's funny because I am not like a traditional like ADHD type person. I don't need things to be instant gratification. I can last through. I can, I can invest in the story to get to the end, you know? But just like everybody, it's just there's particular ways I enjoy getting there. You made it through Malazan. Huh? You made it through Malazan. I only beat myself up to get to the end of that book so that you wouldn't be mad at me. No, I, I would not have been mad at you if you didn't finish it. I took it on your recommendation, and I got through the first one. You beat Dickens. <laughs> Lovecraft. Tell, oh, my God. Lovecraft is hard, too, dude. I definitely understand the things that you didn't like about Malazan. Yeah, Lovecraft is rough. The best Lovecraft books are not written by H.P. Lovecraft. So many people have picked up the torch and written in that world, right? Um, and so you can get a lot of really good storytelling. But reading actual Lovecraft? I don't know. Are there any good books by him? 
I'm trying to think of what might stand out as one I could get through and read again. I don't think there are any. Osmond Lira, thank you. Definitely my favorite hobby brand currently. Using the weathered bronze technique on my first Space Marine Combat Patrol. Going awesome. Bronze statue army type of look. Awesome, awesome. It's so good and so quick. Culture novels are post-scarcity, anarcho-communist, space opera, sci-fi. That's a lot of words. It's a whole lot of stuff. Player of Games is on. a good read for someone who likes war games. I don't know this. Culture novels are post-scarcity, anarcho-communist, space opera, sci-fi. That was a whole lot of... Like, I'm trying to work through that in my head. Very specific genre. Yeah. Anarcho-communist. I mean, that sounds like 40K to a T, right? I think that's what... I feel what, like I read a whole novel just with that. I feel, yeah. I feel like Rebel Moon <laughs> was Yikes. trying for that. Rebel Moon. I'm not, I mean, I, I, like, I like the I, after the us. fall sci-fi stuff, you know? Like post... Uh... Not like necessarily... I mean, post-apocalyptic stuff can be cool, but it, it, it's more like how mankind made what he is now based on the problems they created before. Like, it's usually like no AI, right? Dune yeah. carries that. 40K took it from Dune. Um, you know, you have all these things where mankind barely survived the, the apocalyptic situation it got itself into by creating AI or nuking itself to whatever. And then how they've rebuilt and gotten back into high tech, but the high tech is now different with that in mind. I like that as a trope. It's interesting to see where people take it, although most times it, it becomes very samey, right? Nebuchadnezzar, thank you for the follow. The world can't really rule in those scenarios. The world has to be in the background as a historic <sighs> reference for why the characters are in the front, right? Oh, Flash Gordon. Lady. I That's just pure pulp right there. Yeah, I should probably get to getting stuff ready for... Like Princess of Mars. Now we're talking about pulp fiction. Jason, do you want to hang out for a little bit, or are you... Nope, I'm good cool. being done. All right, everyone. All right. Tell Culture novel setting links. is more Dark Age than 40th Millennium. Jen's going to throw up a whole bunch of links here for us. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. I uh, got a little bit of painting done. Tried out some fun new stuff. A, little, a couple little demos. Talked a little bit about sci-fi stuff. Uh, don't forget, you can uh, pick up all the fantastic paints that we've been using here, except for some of the ones that are pre-releasing. Except for all the ones he just used. Not all of them. <laughs> Two of them. Two. <laughs> uh, you can pick up all our paints on our website, which was linked by Jen here just a moment ago. MoneyMillHobbies.com. Uh, you can also find a lot of them at your local game stores using the FLGS link. Uh, you can support all your local stores you're, where you like to hang out and play games. Um, check out our YouTube as well. It's a great place to find more tutorials like what we were talking about today. Uh, we have a bunch of shorts on there as well as some long form videos. You can also check all of the restreams from, uh, old Twitch videos as well as all of our current YouTube, uh, re up or re restreams, uh, in the live tab because we have been streaming on YouTube as well as Twitch, which is awesome. Thank you guys who are hanging out with us on YouTube. If you are on, sorry to interrupt Jordan, but yeah. if you are on YouTube and you want to continue watching painting, um, come jump on over here to Twitch. We're going to raid Next Level Painting is on. I thought he was going to Adepticon, but he is streaming right now. Oh. So well, we're going to raid him in a few minutes. He and... probably flies out tomorrow. Okay. Yep. So <laughs> join us over here. Awesome. Don't forget to uh, check out the Discord as well, you guys. Uh, come hang out with us and join 3,852 amazing artists in the Discord, uh, including... One other amazing person <laughs> named Ghost Hunter. 3,853 amazing artists. Yes. Yeah, 3,853. Yeah. Ghost Hunter's one of them. He just doesn't like to admit it. Yep. Uh, thank you guys so much. We are going to be gone at Adepticon. Well, I'm going to be gone at Adepticon tomorrow. We'll be live again tomorrow. Jason will be here streaming. Jason and Jen. Jason and Jen. Sorry. Uh, and then we will be gone after that. No streams until Tuesday of the following week. Yep. One week from today will be one the next stream after tomorrow. From today. Yep. Um, I am super excited to be there to meet all of you who are going. Uh, all of you who will not be there, you will be missed. Jen um, might paint tomorrow. TBD. We'll see. That is awesome. And uh, yeah. <laughs> TBD. We're going to go raid next level painting. We will see you guys all later. Thank you so much for being here. Have a great one, gang. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.